Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Hopefully you could uh, hear me. But here is how you can uh, use um, Camaillo, or where is the place of Camaillo in um, voice over IP, IP telephony network, either connecting devices or connecting uh, uh, the traffic from devices to gateways, to media servers, could be for transcoding or could be for some other kind of uh, feature, could be even like a gateway to Twitter for instant messaging, so it's not only um, Audio video, it's also instant messaging present that you can do with Camaillo and with SIP as a protocol. Now going to more into the development uh, side of uh, as FOSDEM it's oriented for developers. I'm going to speak uh, about uh, Camaillo configuration file a bit, which actually is like a scripting language. It has uh, a part with global parameters. You could see like global variables from your point of view. It's about Camaillo being configured to listen on some specific IP port, a specific transport layer like UDP, TCP, TLS. And then we have the, the part that it's used for routing uh, the SIP uh, packet. So you will have to actually think about Camaillo as not being a telephony engine, but more like a SIP packet uh, router. So you get access to every SIP packet that goes under the network, and it's up to you via the configuration file to decide, okay, that's uh, Daniel, let's see, Daniel, it's a, a local user, I would like to route to it, so it's a location service that you can put together and the call is sent to a device. It's a telephone number that looks like a mobile number, then you can send it to uh, a gateway towards mobile PSTN uh, uh, networks. So it's up to you to decide everything to the very small details, including authentication, you can drop scanning attacks, and so on. Uh, so this scripting language is giving you the um, tools to decide. So you can look at headers, you can look at source IP, and a lot of other attributes related to uh, this uh, SIP package that you received. Now, as I said, we started in 2001 the, the project. At that time, there was not a clear choice for a scripting language. It was Perl, and Perl still exists there, but somehow it was not designed for uh, recurrent execution of the same script. So a lot of libraries don't care about memory. They don't free it uh, because they expect that the interpreter is shut down after the exec one-time execution of the script. Then Python was not really that famous in being fast back in late 90s, early 2000s. So as we targeted from the beginning, large deployments was not a choice. Lua probably was there, but somehow we never uh, found it at that time and probably was not that developed. So the, at the end, the decision was writing from scratch. And of, uh, from scratch, and of course, you have some benefits you can control everything about that interpreter because you write it, you know. If that action is triggered, it's up to you to do it. If that return code, it's uh, return it, it's up to you to interpret it as you uh, like. And then, of course, you can optimize it for your specific needs because we know we have to deal mainly with routing C packets and uh, also can control the evolution of the language how it's going to be developed over the time, the, the structure, and so on and so forth. But then a lot of drawbacks that we discover over the time, like we had to reinvent the wheel for a lot of uh, like, uh, small uh, uh, operation, you know, all these string operations, substring, concatenation, and so on. You will have to implement it in C, which is the, the language used for Camaillo, and then exported it to these uh, uh, self-made uh, scripting uh, languages. Then there are no external libraries that you can just import and use. You'll have to write as a module inside Camaillo if you want to extend this uh, language, or actually also in the core you can do it. Then it's not used outside the Camaillo, so practically you don't get the benefit of other people testing it in other conditions with different uh, input that could reveal eventually some side effects on different operation, and uh, uh, that would be uh, useful. And also, because of the initial uh, design, there are also some limitation in terms of how the, the uh, script uh, interpreter behaves. It, it has a lot of optimization as startup, sort of compilation in memory, and then making the 
uh, reload harder because we keep a lot of references to some pointers in private memory for each process. So there are some uh, limitation that some people started to complain about it. So the solution over the time was like trying to somehow offer an alternative for the people that would like to have this uh, more or less uh, main demands about an option to reload the routing logic without uh, restart and then uh, ability to have more feature and be more flexible with these scripting languages because at the beginning it was only like VoIP but now it's integration with a lot of other systems. Backends like NoSQL, you know, every other day it's another NoSQL uh, popping up and maybe you want to use it. So we added like uh, two versions ago, uh, a framework in the core and we named it Kamailio Embedded Interface. And the idea was to have a mechanism that a module exports a function to this framework and the framework propagates it to many other scripting languages, not only our native scripting language. Uh, it was added in 5.0, now we are already at the version 5.1. And uh, it's implemented now for uh, four uh, scripting engines, Lua, Python, JavaScript, and Squirrel scripting, uh, a small one which I actually developed more for teaching and having others, uh, a small module that could use as an inspiration, but it's very similar to Lua, and actually in that matter also specific, uh, similar to the JavaScript uh, duct tape uh, interpreter. We still have some other uh, modules that allows you to execute inline scripts or uh, uh, you know, uh, application written in Perl, which was actually the first interpreter added in, in uh, Kamailio, and then .NET with all this sharp uh, visual basic, and uh, then also a Java, which I haven't really touched it, but someone contributed as a matter of fact to have as you could see in the second slide, over 200 extension. Now when I say inline execution, it's we have the default configuration scripting language with our routing blocks and somewhere inside there is a function Lua run and we, you can pass like uh, a method name which is defined in an external Lua script. So inline, it's also Kamailio becomes the, the interpreter of the Lua it's initialized at the startup and then just inline execution inside uh, the old uh, native scripting language, which was used for uh, many years, but uh, people wanted a bit more uh, flexibility. So this is, if you are not familiar, this is kind of our scripting languages. We define it route as being the keyword for what would be a, a equivalent of a function. Then we add the name for the route, like the name of the function. Parameters we don't provide because Practically each variable is like a global variable in the scripting language. So it's rather simplified scripting language. And then we define our tokens like URI, it's a request URI, the address of the target, and then adding headers and so on are functions that we export through our modules to this uh, scripting language, again, written from scratch. And now let's look, maybe you can picture a bit this small function from our native uh, scripting language and I'll try to walk through the four that implement the Kim interface and show the equivalent and give some information about these uh, scripting languages. So we already had uh, another presentation about uh, uh, Lua in real-time communication with Janus. It exists in FreeSwitch and Asterix, so it's like Lua it's hitting the RTC world more or less in terms of uh, scripting. It was added as an extension for inline execution like eight years ago. It's a very small and fast interpreter. Sometimes you get it in pair with the equivalent C code that we implemented in native code. And of course, uh, one of the uh, features that you have with this uh, scripting uh, engine that you can use now, you can reload this uh, scripting uh, um, file without uh, restarting Kamailio. Um, uh, so practically down there is the equivalent that you will have to write in uh, Lua. So again, one slide back, this is native configuration file about more or less adding a header to the C message and sending out. And here it's uh, the same testing. If it's targeting myself as a server, then adding a header 
and sending out through uh, the socket we are using it. So pretty much equivalent, but the, the power of this scripting language, using this scripting language is not the, just using the equivalent or what we export from Kamailo, it's importing whatever other uh, library you find out there for uh, uh, Lua. Maybe you need to interconnect with CouchDB, maybe you inter need to interconnect with some uh, self-made API server and you have better, I, I don't know, HTTP API or NetString or RPC uh, libraries in Lua. So you don't need to implement anything anymore in uh, C. And then it's a link to a larger file that could be a starting point if you want to use Lua for your uh, uh, scripting languages. Again, you can build anything like from telephony system to instant messaging and uh, any other uh, real-time communication systems with um, uh, Kamailio. So used by telecoms with over 10 millions of uh, phone connected to the platform. The second one would be JavaScript, but think about as scripting languages. Don't think about that complex stuff that you get in the browser that uh, access the HTML elements and so on. There is a basic uh, scripting language be behind it with the, you know, the common math and string operation plus the grammar to uh, define function objects and structure in the uh, uh, JavaScript. It's not the, any big uh, browser uh, JavaScript engine. It's an open source uh, engine, but it's quite fast and uh, easy to understand. It's called uh, duct tape. It's available on uh, GitHub. Doesn't have uh, much uh, um, like uh, external libraries that you can use still fairly decent, decent there, but it's providing no dependency inside Kamailio because it's the duct tape project provides a single C file, file and uh, uh, include file that you can import and they recommend to use this one. So practically you de don't depend on an external library. You can just have Kamailio compile it and you have this JavaScript, which of course gives you more flexibility in the operation plus reloading, which is one of the uh, desired uh, feature inside uh, Kamailio. Then we have uh, app Python. I'm not the original developer of this module. I'm not much into the Python. I just added the extension to uh, see the exports done through the Kemi framework. Uh, as a matter of that, uh, right now the reloading is uh, not working properly. I started to implement it, but as I don't have uh, the proper uh, knowledge to put it that way to uh, look at, to see how the, the Python interpreter can reload the script, uh, I still need a bit of time. On the other hand, from the community, this seems to be very popular, especially because of the uh, extensions you have in Python. So probably if you don't find the library in Python for what you need, then you'll have to write it anyhow from scratch because very unlikely to find it somewhere else. Again, the link and the equivalent, you see it's pretty much very small. And again, this is the equivalent of an existing uh, Kamailio routing block, but otherwise the benefits would be plug your own uh, libraries and mix the code. From Kamailio point of view, you just get a new module, KSR, standing for Kamailio C routing with a lot of other submodules and functions. And the last I have, uh, uh, implemented for it's Squirrel, which again was from more or less splitting from Lua because Lua is a bit loose in terms of the grammar for the um, language itself. And this guy that uh, is more or less one main developer uh, tried to have a more strict uh, 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 scripting languages. On that matter, it's quite fast as I tested. But in terms of extension and the structure of language, it's also quite limited because it's not that popular. There are some gaming engine using it, but also with this one, again, maybe you can use it as a teaching mechanism or you can use it in embedded interfaces because it's also very small and uh, the interpreter is imported in our uh, uh, module because not so many distribution use them and I wanted to have an option to reload if you want with a very small uh, interpreter. Now, what's the state? And pretty much getting to the uh, end. 
practically most of the modules that we implemented in Camarillo export their function also to the KME framework. So this KSR module has now over 600 functions that you can use in Python, in Lua. Everything to control like timeout of transaction, where to route it, redirect of the traffic, connecting the calls uh, together. Everything that is available in the scripting languages is pretty much there. Again, it's not 100% because there are some modules that we didn't get there, like the IMS one, but that's a big beast that needs to be approached at some point. You have examples, uh, like complete example of a telephony routing engine with Python, Lua, SQL, JavaScript in that link. And don't forget, if you need and have a library written in another language, you can still use uh, um, inline execution for a lot of these .NET uh, languages with mono interpreter, Perl, is still there, and Java, if you are uh, having something that you can uh, reuse there. So uh, probably for uh, Mono, as I am the developer of that interpreter as well, it would be easier for me to add. I haven't done the app Perl and app Java, and if the other developers are not jumping in, very unlikely that I will uh, allocate resources for... Uh, it's not much, I'm really helping willing to help if you need, but it's unlikely that I will do it myself alone. And eventually, as a shout out there, if you use Python and you want to have a reload, please approach me to test it. I will do the coding, but I need someone to test and eventually uh, help me if it's a, a bit uh, familiar with embedding Python on, again, reloading the scripting languages. So thank you. I see a lot of uh, uh, people from the community in terms of developers, likely 15 here. Thanks for coming again to uh, real-time uh, development uh, room here at FOSDEM and helping actually because some people will jump and take my place here. Once again, thank you. If you have a question until we shift to the next uh, presenter, please say it. Otherwise, Matt, I think, is the next one. You should come down here, a question. Yeah, I did a very basic uh, benchmark, and pr practically at that time there was only Lua and Python. And for Lua, you barely see any, uh, it's in terms of microseconds, and sometimes I didn't know it was a virtual machine, and I didn't know which was the reason for that, because it was like sometimes the least execution time was in Lua, sometimes it was in the native scripting languages. Because if you are familiar with Lua, exporting is like just executing a port, uh, pointer to the function in uh, um, uh, Lua. Last year in the Lua dev room, I presented more about this interpreter because I'm somehow, I learn writing uh, programming languages. I'm a computer science uh, engineer. And I did some optimization to really pass the pointer at the end. It's just only index, uh, one index in direction in between Lua and the C code. Python was a bit slower. Because the guy that designed the module made it a bit strange from, from my opinion, but maybe a bit better from Python developer because try to export uh, an object. So for each message, it's creating an object, which takes a bit longer. So it was like twice uh, slower with uh, Python, but it was still like uh, for the my test was like uh, 2,000 registration per second in Python in a single thread. So depending on how many children and so on, but that was only a registration. So performance is still good. Uh, we have, uh, um, it, no, because this is like, it's initiated at the start and it's up to you to use it always with uh, Lua or always with uh, um, native scripting language. Or if you use inline, again, we load everything at startup. It's why that reload is somehow demanded because in the past, we didn't do anything if you change the script language. Now, if you change the script la language, you'll have to send an RPC command to Kamailio, please reload. And then with the next message, we'll read it from the file and will be effective. In, in processing the message, yeah. is, that, is that process then locked? Yeah, that, that process until, yeah, a process from the moment it receives the C message until it sends out does only that one. But you create many of them, and we have some asynchronous framework if you need to 
suspend and do something else and then resume the same message later. Yeah, it is compatible, the same function are exported. Stefan? Probably, yes. As I said, I, I'm... But again, we create um, um, processes. So probably it's per process. We don't have threads. I said you like thread, but actually we create processes. And then I think it's per process a log, but that's somehow we are how we do it in, in Kamaile. Last one here, because we get late. And Matt, please be around. The next speaker. <coughs> okay. Are you using Node as the interpreter? Which one? JavaScript. Yep. No, no, it's using duct tape, duct tape interpreter, which is written from scratch, but uh, quite popular as I could see the feedback from the project. It's embedded in many other applications, and it's also targeting use of J uh, JavaScript in embedded uh, in, uh, devices. Because J uh, not JS, it's using the one from Chromium, right? Which is C++ actually. I wanted the C1, and this is Maybe not that complete, the, the one, but it's very fast. It's in pair, more or less, with um, uh, Lua. Okay, thank you. And. Uh